Welcome back to Exercise Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. The general topic of this video is going to be how myokinase relates to what's called the muscle purine nucleotide cycle, and we're going to discuss that cycle in this video. I'm also going to put this video in the nucleotide metabolism playlist because it obviously relates to that. So we've talked about uh, in one of the previous videos about AMPKA, which is an adenosine monophosphate uh, mediated protein kinase, and how it's a sensor for AMP levels in the cell, particularly muscles, and that when AMP levels start to build up with heavy exercise, it signals to AMPK, which is a protein, that we need to do more catabolism, more energy production, and the, the whole goal of that is really maintaining ATP so that you can continue exercise. And that's the key we're going to remember in this video. I need to maintain ATP levels. Now, right here I have the reaction of adenylate kinase, which in muscle is usually referred to as myokinase. If I have two molecules of adenosine diphosphate, uh, one of the phosphates from one of those ADP molecules can be transferred to the other ADP, which will give you one AMP and one ATP. The other thing to know about this reaction is it's freely reversible. Um, AMP uh, and ATP can combine. In other words, I can transfer one of the phosphates from ATP onto AMP, and I'm back with two molecules of ADP. All right. Now, the whole thing about the purine nucleotide cycle, which is shown right here, is it's supposed to decrease the levels of adenosine monophosphate. We don't want AMP levels to just start building up indefinitely while we're doing exercise, because if that were the case, we'd have more and more and more and more AMP, and that's not a good thing. So I'll explain the reason why we need to get rid of this AMP, but to do that, I'm going to need to explain what's called the muscle purine nucleotide cycle. And this actually occurs in other cells as well. Uh, they express these enzymes, but it's, it's most prominent in muscles because during exercise, they are extraordinarily metabolically active. All right. So you may have seen a couple of these enzymes in uh, purine biosynthesis, but here is AMP. All right, adenosine monophosphate, it just comes over here, it's gonna be part of this cycle. We have an enzyme called AMP deaminase, a very similar enzyme to adenosine deaminase, so there's multiple kinds of these, but what they do is they remove this amine atop the six-membered ring of the adenine uh, nitrogenous base, and replace it with a double bond oxygen, a carbonyl. Okay, so that's the reaction of AMP deaminase or adenosine deaminase. That gives us this molecule called IMP. Now we know, uh, at least from purine biosynthesis, what can happen to IMP. IMP is gonna react with a series of two enzymes. The first is adenylosuccinate synthetase, which is going to give us adenylosuccinate. I'm not gonna focus on all this stuff here, but IMP can be converted to adenylosuccinate and then adenylosuccinate can be converted into AMP once again by adenylosuccinate lyase. Okay, and that brings us back to AMP. And the question is, what really is the purpose of, of this cycle in this process if we're just getting back AMP? Why would we go through this cycle and waste a GTP? All right, why would we do that? Well, it turns out that if you remember from the purine biosynthesis playlist, adenylosuccinate synthetase is an allosteric enzyme. Okay, it turns out that adenosine monophosphate actually inhibits, allosterically inhibits adenylosuccinate synthetase. Okay, because in the pathway for AMP synthesis, adenylosuccinate synthetase is the committed step from IMP. So AMP can feed it back essentially and inhibit this enzyme. So if this enzyme is inhibited, we're still gonna have AMP deaminase, or adenosine deaminase, that's deaminating AMP into IMP, but the IMP will not sufficiently go back to adenylosuccinate because this enzyme is allosterically inhibited. So IMP really, at least at the time of exercise, has really one option. And that option is, be, is to go into its degradation pathway. So it turns out that IMP can be degraded initially to inosine and then hypoxanthine and then it would obviously be degraded further into uh, uric acid. We're not gonna go that far. But essentially, IMP will just be degraded. So what that leads to is a net reduction in adenosine monophosphate. There's not gonna be a lot of this cycle going on because presumably the high levels of AMP that are building up as exercise increases are gonna inhibit this enzyme. 
And so IMP that's produced from the deamination reaction has really one option mainly, and that's degradation. So AMP levels are going to drop because they're going to keep feeding into this pathway and then into IMP degradation. Now, let's think about this for a second according to Le Chatelier's principle, because this is an equilibrium reaction. If I have a product, at least the way I've written it, like AMP that's decreasing, so if a product is decreasing, what is that going to do to the, the shift of the equilibrium? Am I going to shift the equilibrium left or right? Well, if I'm lowering the concentration of AMP, then this equilibrium is going to shift more to the right. Now, that's going to produce more AMP, but what is that also going to produce more of? ATP, all right? So the reason we have at least this half of the cycle, AMP deaminase and then IMP degradation, is because this clears some of the adenosine monophosphate. It clears some of this by converting it to IMP and then degrading it. So the AMP levels are actually going to, not, they're not going to just exponentially increase with exercise. Some of this is actually going to be gotten rid of. It's going to decrease in concentration. And that's going to cause this reaction of myokinase to shift to the right to produce more ATP. Because remember, if we're doing heavy exercise, which is when we would expect AMP levels to start to build up, our whole goal is to maintain exercise. And how do we maintain the exercise? We maintain the levels of ATP. Now, obviously, oxidative phosphorylation is going to be a major source of that, glycolysis as well, and maybe some other processes like beta oxidation. But in general, this is going to be one of the ways that we actually do maintain that ATP. Because let's be honest, we're going to be building up a lot of ADP due to kinase reactions. So that ADP with a drop in AMP will be converted back to ATP, and that partially maintains AP, ATP levels. All right, so hopefully this video gave you a little bit of understanding of how myokinase relates to at least part of the muscle purinucleotide cycle. So I'm just going to do a brief uh, recap and then we'll conclude. So AMP levels build up during heavy exercise, and remember AMP is normally a signal to AMPK that signals to increase catabolic reactions so we can get energy and maintain ATP levels. Okay, But AMP levels can't just build up indefinitely because they would stop this reaction from shifting to the right. Okay, So AMP will actually enter into this half of the cycle where it will be degraded initially by AMP deaminase to IMP and then IMP will be degraded into uh, purine degradation products going to the right here. The reason it does not sufficiently go to the left here is because AMP as a molecule is an allosteric inhibitor of adenylosuccinate synthetase. So this enzyme will mostly be shut down. And so IMP only has one choice really is to go to the right here. All right, that's going to bring AMP levels down because AMP is being shunted into this pathway. And by shifting a, or by, by decreasing AMP levels, this reaction of myokinase will shift to the right, which helps maintain ATP levels. All right, hopefully this makes sense. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.